In the second section of chapter 12, basically introducing ourselves to functions, what they're asking us to do is start building up a zoo of functions, the kind of functions that we will be using all semester, the kinds of functions we will be using after the semester ends, um, just using two basic tools. I want to be able to chop vertically, I don't want to chop, be able to chop horizontally. Just a reminder that if I chop vertically, I call that a cross section. If I could chop horizontally, I call that a contour. Now, when someone says, find all the contours and sections, um, I usually have to choose whether I want to find the contours first or the sections first. Um, I'm going to start with the contours first. I think it's easier with this one. Uh, it's kind of a mess otherwise. Sometimes it's, it's the other way, but here I'm just going to try to find the contours first. So I'm just going to write down contours. Now what is a contour again? A contour is what you get when you set z equal to a constant. Now let me pick a couple of stupid constants first. If I pick something like z equals negative 1, and I set that equal to z, right, so this is equal to z, I'm going to get x squared plus y squared equals negative 1. Now, from algebra, uh, we know this doesn't have any solutions because the left-hand side is always positive uh, or zero. The right-hand side is negative. Um, so this doesn't have any solutions. Now, what does that mean? That means whatever the graph of this is, if I chop it at height negative one, I get nothing. All right, let's try a slightly different chop. How about z equals zero? If I chop at z equals zero, I put a zero in for z, I get x squared plus y squared equals zero. Now, what does that look like? Well, um, in algebra, we know that x squared plus y squared equals r squared is a circle of radius r. Well, what is this? This is a circle of radius zero. Um, okay, that's just a point, right? This is just the point zero, zero. Now, what does that tell us? That tells us that whatever the graph of this is, when I chop it at height zero, I just hit that point. Let's pick a slightly different one. Um, and again, there are lots of times when we're doing stuff where we're just going to have to try lots of different ones because you're, you're taking chops just to see what you can see. If I chop at z equals 1, I put a 1 in for z, I get x squared plus y squared equals 1. Well, that's a whole circle of radius 1. Right? This says if I chop at height 1, I'm going to get a whole circle of radius 1. Um, we can do this a little bit um, more. I could chop at height 2. When I put a 2 in for z, I'm going to get x squared plus y squared equals 2, which is a circle of radius square root 2, so it's just a bigger circle. Um, you can see, by the way, that the higher you chop, the bigger the circle you're going to get. But it's always going to be a circle you know, or nothing if I chop too low. So we have essentially found all the contours. We can tell you exactly what the contours look like depending on where we chop. Now, um, in terms of a graph, what does this say? This says if I chop at height 0, we just get a dot. If I chop at height 1, I get a circle. If I chop at height 2, I get a slightly bigger circle. If I chop at height 3, I get a slightly bigger circle. Now, I think we could guess pretty easily what's going to go on here, um, but it could be one of two things, and I want to make sure that we eliminate one. So I'm going to start taking sections. Now, sections are what you get, not when you set z equal to 0, I mean z equal to a constant, but when you set x or y equal to a constant. So let's just do a couple here. I want to do this section. This is called a cross section. If you take lots and lots of math, they have a very fancy definition for this. But meanwhile, I'm going to say, um, if I try type, uh, plugging in x equals 0, I'm just going to get y squared equals z, or z equals y squared. Now just remember, if I was going to graph this, right, uh, I, there's nowhere for x in this picture. z would go up here, y would go over here like this, and I'd get a parabola. That's not so bad. If I want to take a different kind of section, uh, I guess we'll just we'll call it two, um, like y equals zero. If I plug in y equals zero up here, what I'm going to get is x squared equals z, which is also a parabola. 
So th where this is x and this is z, and I get like this. Now what does it say? This is if I chop this way, I get a parabola. If I chop this way, I get a parabola. Now, why do I like that? And why do I think that helps our cause here? Well, first off, the picture we had drawn before looked like this. And to me, this could have either been a bowl or a cone. But a cone has a sharp corner, and when I was taking chops, I wasn't getting something with sharp corners. So I know this is supposed to come down like this, like this, have a r nice round corner like this. This is supposed to come down like this, and have a nice smooth thing like that. Um, so this really, um, I think the technical word is paraboloid, um, but bowl works good, and we're just gonna call it a bowl. Now, by the way, um, you're going to notice that we didn't draw the axes first and then draw the and draw the diagram. Um, for most of the time we, when we graph the sensor, not all, there are exceptions, um, it's going to be easier to draw the thing first, yes, and then put in the axes. So what we have uh, is our example of a bowl, which is great. Now, the follow-up questions they gave us were things like this. What about something like z equals minus x squared plus y squared. Well, what does that do? Um, just as in algebra, right? this just takes this graph and flips it upside down. Not a big deal. And again, putting in the axes after I draw the graph is a lot easier. If I do something like z equals um, x squared plus y squared plus 2, what is that going to do? Well, that should just take my whole bowl and just lift it up to. So I'm just gonna draw my whole bowl, right? And then I'm going to draw the axes, but the axes now come down, way down to here like this. And again, it's a lot easier to draw the bowl first than the axes. So we have our first element of our zoo, I guess an animal if you like, um, it's a bowl.